The year was 1994. The first commercially successful web browser had just been launched. O.J. Simpson had just fled the police in his white Fort Bronco. Bill Clinton was president. And I was three. I've been digitizing old home videos, and I came across this little gem. Jimmy, see the big hands on TV. Come here, Bill, and I'll show you. What is it? It's me, Bill, that's what I want to do. Remember being so excited for this doll. Produced by Tiger Electronics, Mirabelle was a talking doll who had phrases she'd stay with when you pressed a button on her chest. But she also interacted with an included videotape. The doll and tape were designed with Veil technology, which stands for Video Encoded Invisible Light. In English, that means the video is encoded in such a way that the camera in Mirabelle's chest can interpret different imperceptible brightnesses as different responses for her to give. I think. There's a tiny Wikipedia article on it. I read it. I barely understood it. That said, I vividly remember having to return mine to the store at least three times because it didn't work. And even when it did, it probably didn't work long because I don't really remember playing with it much. Weirdly, that same year, Tiger released a toy VHS set called Battle Vision. As far as I can tell, that one worked fine. I have no idea what went right there and what went wrong with Mirabelle. But in lieu of a better answer, I'm going with sexism. For some reason, Mirabelle's memory has stuck with me all these years later, so I got to googling. According to a post on Reddit, Mirabelle was recalled for what sounds like programming issues. She was supposed to be reissued once they were resolved, but she never was. Both the Reddit user Chaos Breezy and YouTuber Venus Star Power 94 state that one day their Mirabelle dolls just had weird malfunctions, and that is more or less all the internet has to say about the doll. There's a couple videos of her talking, a shitty copy of her movie on YouTube, and that's it. As a champion of things that no one cares about, I'm fixing this. So I bought my own Mirabelle doll after all of these years, and I am hope to catch her reacting to her tape on video. She's in fair condition, all things considered. Didn't pay too, too much. She's got little white marks on her face, which I read is common to happen to the material on her face as she ages, so that's... Other than that, though, pretty good condition. I haven't put batteries in her yet. I've been waiting, so I'm gonna do that now. Okay, I, I didn't want to waste whatever she had left in her, so I didn't want to put the batteries until I was totally ready for to record. I'm so nervous. Okay. Oh, you be my friend. Whoa! All right. That's funny. Map card. Here's a map card. What are we gonna do? I'm here. Okay. So her eyes and mouth are supposed to move, but she's also almost thirty. I'm lucky she works at all. Let's go see if she works with the t with the tape. For best results, I found an old CRT television and some Dunkaroos as an offering to the 90s gods. So let's do this. Spoiler alert, Mirabelle worked for the entire tape. Her eyelids even started working halfway through. I could not be happy with how this turned out. So, since everything went according to plan A, Plan B was her not working with the tape. Plan C was her glitching out halfway, for those who were wondering. Mirabelle and I will be reviewing Mirabelle Friends together. The tape opens with instructions on how to use Mirabelle. It's fairly straightforward. Surprisingly, Mirabelle will talk during this part of the tape, probably even more than I captured on camera since I didn't push her button until about halfway through. Once the videotape is playing, you should push the button once on Mirabelle's butterfly pen. She'll say, for you be my friend. Oh, you tell me she's friend. ready to watch TV with you. Oh. Then look at Mirabelle. Mirabelle will talk and come to life when oh. she watches the video. Now, let's go on a magical adventure with Mirabelle. Here's the moment that I noticed her earrings turning on. The 90s gods are pleased with my Dunkaroo offering. The story begins at Nicole's house. 
She's a little girl who's sad that none of her friends are around to play. I want to tell you the most amazing story. Oh. It happened to my friend Maribel and me. Oh, I love it. One day, I wanted my other friends to play with us. But no one seemed to be home. She wishes that her doll Mirabelle were real so they could hang out. You know what, Mirabelle? Sometimes I wish you were real. And then a fairy pops out of the pendant on Mirabelle's chest, beckoning Nicole to follow her. Follow her where? Nicole doesn't ask. I guess stranger danger is suspended when you're dealing with fairies? It's a world made of chocolate and candy canes. There are rainbows all day, but it never rains. You can't get to that world, riding trains or planes. Follow me, follow me. Fairy guides Nicole through the play tunnel on the floor, and they pop out in an animated world. Nicole takes turning into a cartoon really well, and is super pumped that Mirabelle's alive. The fairy says Mirabelle will stay a real girl as long as they stay in... Magic Land. Will Mirabelle stay like this? As long as you're in Magic Land. Ladies, gents, and otherwise, give these people an award for creativity and naming stuff. The two girls get to exploring, and because this is a cartoon for little girls, there's candy growing out of trees and stuff. Mirabelle goes to town on a candy cane, but Nicole is a bit unsure all of a sudden. And then comes in this brat Gwendolyn who's all Maybe it's hers. Hello. Excuse me, is this your garden? It belongs to some old lady. Are we allowed to eat the candy? Of course. I come here every day. Hooray! Are you sure? I mean, did the old lady say it was alright? Oh, there's so much candy here, she'll never miss it. I'm gonna go. I can't wish that. So Mirabelle basically goes, forget our unbreakable bond of friendship, this girl says I can have sugar, and she and Gwendolyn go deeper into the garden. I would say that no kid would, hey wait a minute, when it comes to candy growing out of the ground, but I was 100% that kid. I was hanging out with a friend at a grocery store one time, and I almost lost my mind when they started peeling free tattoos off Lunchable packages. Also, Nicole is totally vindicated because there's a sign in the garden that says the candy is being grown by a sorceress for Santa to put in stockings. This opens up a can of lore worms. Are they implying Santa lives in Magicland and not at the North Pole? Or does he just go back and forth in his own little play hut tunnel like Nicole did? It doesn't matter to the cartoon, but it matters to me. Nicole races over to Mirabelle and Gwendolyn to tell them about Santa candy, but Gwendolyn could care less. Not letting me talk. 
talk. Mirabelle just became a person, so she probably has no concept of who Santa even is, so she's easily swayed to go with Gwendolyn to her playhouse. Nicole, ditched yet again by another friend, gets lost in a hedge maze because Gwendolyn is the worst. Meanwhile, this is Mira so much fun! Of course! I'm not a school of sport like Nicole! You can do whatever you want when you're with me! I like you! You're really different! We bounce between the two girls a lot for a while. Back to I'm Nicole, that very first order comes back to rescue her. Also, apparently her name is Ariana? Ariana! Hello, Nicole. And Nicole knew this somehow? Why didn't we, the audience, know this until just now? Mirabelle the doll had been calling her Ariana for a bit, I think, before this. There's Ariana! Let's have an adventure! But that's not helpful if you're just watching the tape by itself. I just find it odd that the cartoon can't stand on its own in that way. A small nitpick, but a nitpick nonetheless. The end of the maze opens up to the sorceress Matilda's house. How convenient. Nicole fills her in on the stitch with Mirabelle. Matilda is the cool maiden aunt I want to grow up to be. The two of them scry together to find Gwendolyn, which apparently involves riffing on a classic kid's tune. And through the crystal ball, we hop on back to Mirabelle. Suddenly, she cares about Nicole again. So much so that she sings one of those cliche long distance duets with her about the good old days. Do, do, do. 
Here we learn we're playing by Toy Story rules, since Mirabelle seems to have been aware of her surroundings even as a doll. Toy Story wouldn't even be released for another year, though. In other words, Mirabelle walked so Buzz and Woody could run. Respect your elders. Gwendolyn must know she's losing her grasp on Mirabelle, so she plays the I Have Ponies card, and Mirabelle's back on board for the time being. They're not good ponies, though. Matilda sends Nicole off to save Mirabelle from the wild pegasi with a magic wand, regretfully unable to go with her. I wish I could go with you. Why can't you? The Duke put a spell on me. If I step on his property, I'll turn into a toad. No. But I can give you a bit of magic to take along to help you if you need it. I'm going to make you a magic wand. Just don't get into trouble. Whiffly, waffly, tungly wood, make this stick into. Oh dear, how does it go? Make this stick into grubbly good. Breathe fast your foes from their toes to their nose. Simperty, somperty, uh, that's how it goes. <laughs> Girl, what did you do to get cursed? I'm sure it was legendary, but the cartoon doesn't care what it was, so I guess I'm not supposed to care either. Back to the others, Gwendolyn throws her weight around at the stable boy. With Nicole, we meet yet another great side character. Many arms. What do I look like? A tree. A tree. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. 
he's a weirdo, and he helps Nicole break into the castle totally undetected. Finally, everyone's in one place. Nicole arrives just in time to see Mirabel and Gwendolyn lose control on the Pegasi. The Duke is not happy about this, but neither is Mirabel, so... Mirabelle is flung from the Pegasus onto the edge of a cliff, and Nicole rescues her with the most conveniently placed rope I have ever seen. This might be the laziest writing I've ever seen. To no one's surprise, Gwendolyn totally bails when she's in trouble with her dad. Embracing her heroic destiny, Nicole attempts to magic her way out of the situation. Eh, good enough. And so Mirabelle has learned the true meaning of friendship. The two heroines apologize to each other even though Nicole has done absolutely nothing wrong, but yay, friends again! Ariana pops up again to let the girls know it's time to go home. This never happens. Back in the real world, Nicole's friends are here. They could have just made friendship bracelets together. That is a together activity, you guys. But whatever. It's worth noting that the Mirabelle doll originally came with those two friendship bracelets. I'm sad I don't have them, but I do know how to make them, so I just might. Anyway, that's it. Mirabelle and Friends, as it's known on IMDb, or Mirabelle Friends, as it's known on the VHS cover, was directed by Sean Sellis, who worked on a bunch of children's suits in the 90s and early 2000s. It was written by Todd Kessler, who would go on to co-create Blue's Clues, and Susan Snooks, who worked on a bunch of stuff, but relevant experience includes a couple of Clifford the Big Red Dog cartoons, but probably not the ones you're thinking of. It was conceptualized by Lori Grupp, who also worked on Toby Terrier, another Veil Technology toy and tape production by Tiger, made just a year earlier than Mirabelle. The cartoon had a decent team, but produced a subpar product. This was not a good cartoon. Maybe these folks just hadn't hit their strides yet. The back of the VHS says to look for other exciting adventures of Mirabelle, but none were ever This is so much fun! Of in other words, I'm not a school of sports like me. Cool! You can do whatever you want! I've seen these kids shows that they get to realize, though. Well. I think it could be chalked up like to the failure of the doll, really since different. finding her was the only way to see the cartoon. I'm a little sad it went nowhere, since they could have done a cute Christmas special. I really want payoff for those candy trees. Mirabelle could have saved Christmas! But alas, the story ends here. Mirabelle is a lovely doll with a serviceable cartoon. It's really too bad about that programming glitch. She deserves to be better remembered than she is. Do you remember Mirabelle? Let me know in the comments. Peace!